Hi everyone, welcome to another video on my channel. Today I want to show you a very simple do-it-yourself um, file that you can maintain if you want to schedule your workers and, you know, per shift per day. So this is the end result. You can see I've created some sort of restaurant um, employee scheduler. So you control the maximum number of shifts, what are the working days, and you know, really setting up the days that this employee works. And on the top, you can see um, how many employees you need for that day and how much you booked and what is the gap in yellow, if you have too many or too less. So, you know, you can see that if I select everything changes and it also shows you per line if you have a maximum number of shifts. And if I delete the working days, I get um, a, a gray, a, a gray uh, cell on the right so that you understand that this is not a working day. So how did I build this? It's very simple, actually. Let's take a look at all of the formulas that you have here. So let's start with these are text and this is the schedule. So basically I'm using count if. Okay, I'm defining the range and the value. Only V. And I'll show you in a second how I made sure that I could only input a V. Um, see I can't put an X. I can put a you know cap capital V or on capital V. But anyhow, it's, so this counts the number of schedule, and I also have a conditional formatting here that tells me if the value is greater than C, then paint it in yellow. Okay? So conditional formatting is very helpful in this file because I wanted to make something very simple that doesn't require VBA. The, the working days, so here I used a um, data validation, okay, I went to list, usually it's on any value, I went to list, and you see here I have a V, so this basically tells us that because this could be only V or blank, all right, you can also key it in, it's the same thing, so this is what I did for this, actually for this entire area. If you look at this entire area, it's the same list. So here and here, you only can have V. And here again, I use conditional formatting. Okay? So, what is the rule here? Here I used a formula, because I'm not referencing the cell itself. And I'm telling Excel if E10, E10 is the day, the day of the working day. If it's equal V, give it 0 or 1. 0 or 1 meaning false or true. And if it's true, um, then you get a, uh, a gray. Uh, click on format and you can just select the format. I selected just a gray. This one. You see, you can do whatever you want because this way it just gives the user um, when he wants to book people, he says, okay, I can't book him here because it's gray. So I found that very helpful. And so essentially, uh, that's the formulas over here. The date, you just put here the date of the first day of the week that you want, and just drag with a plus one, and whatever date you put here, um, everything will change. Okay, maybe just need to increase a little bit the width. Because um, sometimes I see people key in, key in dates um, and uh, manually, and you can just do it with a formula. A date, you can, you can manipulate date with numbers. Um, by the way, this will start no matter what the day is. So, you see the name changes. And this is also a nice function. You can use text. And text has a lot of options. Okay, I'm using format text called DDDD, and that just gives the name of the, 
the day <coughs> of the week. There are a lot of options with text, so it's a nice, nice function to learn. Maybe I'll make a video about it. Um, so this is this table, and the upper table is also pretty simple. The needed is a value, and booked. I'm using count ifs. Okay, so um, count ifs gives more than one criteria. So I'm looking for the column below, starting from uh, row number 10 through, I just put 10,000, and then cap, cap uh, dollars, because I'm going to use it also for the uh, row below that, if it's equal to V. And I'm also looking for this, for the same column rows, if it's the same name. And I just drag it to the right, and I just copy it then to here. That's why I needed the dollars. And gap is um, just the, the difference between the two. And also here I use conditional formatting. If the value is not equal to zero, just paint it yellow. So I know this will tell the user, okay, I need to unbook this person because I don't need any people on Monday, or I just need to, to change that one. So it shows you immediately that you have a problem with waiters. You have a problem with this waiter, which is overbooked. And you can, theoretically, you can just do it like this and you know, play with uh, play with the numbers. Okay, so this is an unsolvable solution I created for myself. So I'm going to change the numbers, cheat. Okay. Uh, let's see, I got a problem with this guy as well. Let me just give him another shift. <coughs> For Saturday, let's say we need one person. Uh, again, let's cheat a little bit. Okay. And then we have the bartender. Um, let's say I only need one. Honestly, we don't need more than one bartender, to be honest. Uh, it's an overrated, overrated position. So, uh, oh shoot, I don't have anyone for Wednesday or Tuesday, so let me just add them here. Okay. So, and let me just take that one off. And there you go. I've completed a schedule that works. Everybody knows when they're working within all the constraints. And this is a very, you know, simple and easy to use tool to create a scheduling for your workers. Um, uh, in the future, I'll also create a video on how to optimize this, meaning I'll add some sort of uh, financial impact, like uh, cost per person or something like that, and have the system, um, you know, generate what is the best scheduling to optimize cost and still maintain all the constraints all right uh, so if you liked the content please click below on subscribe feel free to write any comments and uh, if you want I can also send you the sample file for your reference okay have a good one